This is the Cosmic Voice. Hello everyone and welcome to the Cosmic Voice. This is Season 5, Episode 24. I am here with my co-host Chris Natalini. Episode 24, yeah, love it. And I am Mick Michaels. Welcome back everyone to another show. Chris, my good fellow man, how are you? Mick, what is happening, dude? We are in the thick of it when this airs. We are full-fledged into summer. I'm excited, I'm excited, warm weather coming up. Loving it, man, loving it, loving it. Get ready for some beach time, some outdoor festivals. It's going to be killer. Oh, yeah. I love the summer. I love the heat. We've talked about this before. It's good. Excited. Yeah, I'm very excited. Very excited. And here we are. Episode 24. This is basically the season finale show. We've done it. This is it, baby. We've done it. This is it. We are right there. Finish line. Finished another season. I don't know where it went. I mean, literally, we ran from September to June. Crazy. Crazy. crazy stuff crazy dude just crazy it's been one hell of a season too i think we've covered some fantastic topics the numbers have been good we had a guest in i mean we were breaking new ground here <laughs> i think yeah man i think it was a great season you know we touched on some things you know with obviously the interview with pam and you know we touched on some things that we haven't touched on before and i love it man it's awesome i'm looking forward to next season already yeah, I mean, you know, with anything, if the industry keeps going the way it is, we'll have plenty of topics. Plenty well, of topics. You know, it's interesting you say that because I know we're, you know, I knew we were recording this and this was going to be our last one. And I just did a few shows recently. And at those shows, I kept thinking to myself, oh, this is going to be a good topic for next season. Jot these ideas yeah, down. Jot these ideas down. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, again, it's an ever changing environment, right? This music industry. By that, I'm saying it's a twofold, right? The industry itself is changing how it's doing business. It has to. It's evolving and it's conforming and it's finding its place, right? As technology changes, as the audience changes. But then it's also changing because. There's always new artists popping in. Yeah. And yeah. their attitude, their energy, their whatever it is they're doing, their creation could start changing things as well. And it's like a wave effect. So there's always something to talk about. Sometimes oh. we are retouching upon topics, but that's because it's an intricate part of what we do. Yeah. You know, yeah. and maybe even tonight's topic could be something where like we're kind of piecing together everything from all episodes of this past season or even the seasons before as we focus in on that. But like you can take that topic and then you can run with it. It's like going down a rabbit hole because it can take you in a lot of different places, especially when you have multiple perspectives and experiences to apply that to. Yeah, man, it's insane. And not that it's about, you know, the show is about us as people. It's about us as what we've learned as artists. But the one thing I will say, like doing these recent couple of shows with my new band i realized that this is a different world bro you know with my last project you know that i was in for so long it, it was different because there was a name attached to it and now that i'm starting from the ground up with a new project i go oof man this is brutal like you know starting from the ground up and doing these first couple of shows you know we haven't been you know we're just starting to get our feet wet in the live performance arena i go man it's way different this is a whole different animal man i mean it, it's different from just a few years ago you know before obviously before COVID. And like i said i'm just i'm looking around and i'm getting these experiences and i'm like oh yeah this is going to be a show topic because these are things i never witnessed before and now that I'm I'm like seriously in the thick of it and I'm sure you coming off your recent tour of overseas you, you know you've probably got some things in the back of your head that goes oh yeah we need to talk about this because there are experiences that you've had because you guys haven't been over there in you know a couple years 
you know, you guys had that one tour and you had to come home because of COVID. So I am sure there are things that you guys ran into that you maybe never have experienced before, didn't think about. And now you're like, oh yeah, like we need to talk about this. So even though this has been a, a great season, I think next season's going to be a, a really interesting because the business does change. And I, I feel like right now it is just a flurry of, it doesn't know where it's headed. I feel like the business is at a crossroads. Like there's just so many things going on and going wrong and everybody's just, like, they just can't get their bearings straight. I don't know if you feel that way, but uh, I think next season's going to be kind of interesting. I do. And as we were talking about right before we went on air, at the level that we're at now, there's certain things that we're familiar with and we're kind of comfortable with, but there's always things that come out of left field and thrown at us. But if we were, and we talked about this in previous shows, if we took what we're doing now and moved it up a level or even downgraded it, we'd be learning things that we wouldn't know, things that we hadn't experienced because it wasn't a piece of the level that we were at. So if we went up a level, there'd be new experiences. So you'd have to learn that. I think that when you go to a different country, even though playing is is playing, right, when you're doing your job, but there are some different rules. There's some similarities, but then there's other things. But there's a cultural thing. There's a time change, a bunch of different stuff. So you're always learning something. You're always getting experiences. And when I was on the recent tour, I was like, yeah, this would be something to talk about. And one of the reasons why I suggested the topic for this show, because of what I experienced on tour recently and how people look at themselves and consider what they're doing and what their goal or the possibilities are and how different that is to somebody else who's doing what they think they should be doing, if that makes sense. Yeah, 100%. Because you're looking at it one way because you've already experienced it. They're looking at it completely different because they haven't or think that's what they want or like we talked about in other shows, that's the perception they get from what they see on the outside. Remember what you said, don't believe everything you see on social media and all because it's kind right. of crafted yeah. in a sense, yeah. right? For yeah. a lot of yeah. bands because there's a lot of inner workings behind the scenes stuff and stuff that you shouldn't be talking about because you're trying to keep that train going. Case in point, you know, like with the Creatures of the Night album, you know, Ace Frehley appeared on the cover, but for years they said that he didn't play on the album. Now there's right. stuff coming out saying, oh, yeah, Ace did play on the album. Ace couldn't remember yesterday if he had to, let alone, <laughs> right, you know, right. 40 years right. ago. Like, you know, a year, two years ago, he's like, yeah, I didn't play on the album. Now, just in recent interviews, he goes, yeah, I could have played some stuff on that album. I, you know, so who knows, right? <laughs> who knows? The point is, is they kept a lot of that under wraps. Same under with wraps, yeah. the two albums prior to Elder, Music from the Elder. Right. It wasn't even Peter Chris playing drums. And drums, right. But he right. appeared in the videos, he did the tour, he, right. you know, press right. and all that kind of stuff. It's a matter of keeping the machine going, so you can't necessarily believe everything that you're seeing. And if you're still thinking that the music industry is MTV from the 80s, <laughs> you're lost. You're, because, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, because it's safe. not. It's not. So, <laughs> But yeah, I think there's plenty of stuff that this industry can give to us to talk about even if we have to talk again about a topic we've covered because really what we talked about in season one when this show started at the height of covid in 2020 during the shutdown that's changed yeah yep within the three years three and a half years whatever it's been things are different so yeah, yeah so yeah. it's definitely yeah. an interesting road who knows what the next season's going to hold in terms of topics it's going to be interesting it's, it's going to be, be interesting. interesting stay tuned stay tuned it's Ross the Boss. Take it down. This is Stephen Pearson from Rat, the Rat Bastard. You're listening to the Cosmic Voice. Let's get through finishing season five with our topic for this show, We the Artist. And basically, I think what we're going to talk about is our perception, our feelings of what being an artist is to us, maybe to other artists that we've talked with and worked with how they approach it, what they consider to be their strong points as an artist, and then some of the misconceptions that people not being an artist have about artists, and even the misconceptions that artists have about being an artist. 
depending on what they have done or are doing, experiencing, or think that they should be doing, or think how things are. I mean, there's a lot to it, but Chris, starting with you, we, the artist, what is it about being an artist that you feel defines you or that you define it as a part of you? Wow. Ooh, that's a heavy question, bro. I, I will say this. The one thing that scares me the most about being an artist is when I am no longer an artist, when I'm no longer a consistent working art, when I'm consistent, but like when I'm not doing it anymore, when I physically and mentally can't do it anymore, like what is my identity? Because my whole life, my identity has been the singer of this band, the singer of this band, the singer of this band. And that's been my identity for so many years. Most of my life, really, since I was, you know, since I, well, you started a little before me, but late teens, early 20s. I mean, I've always been the singer of said band. So coming up on our age and eventually, you know, we're, there's going to come a time that we're not doing it anymore. That's the thing. That's that's what worries me the most. I don't know what my identity will be. I mean, I mean, I guess my identity would be, oh, he's used to sing for you know whoever. But that's something that sticks in my mind pretty often. How will I identify myself when it's all over? Because this is all I've ever done. This is all I've ever known. This is all I've ever wanted to do. I guess it's just like anything else, you know, that they say, not that I'm comparing myself to the likes of Hulk Hogan and Macho Man. But, you know, they said the same thing about pro wrestlers, too. You know, they strive and they work hard. And when it's over, they, they don't know what else to do because all they've ever wanted to do is pro wrestling. And, you know, it's in their blood. And kind of like just the time in COVID where all of us artists were at a standstill. We didn't know what to do. And it was it was a very weird time for all of us. We just at a standstill. We couldn't play out. We couldn't tour, you know, whatever. That's that. I don't know, man. I mean, that's... Uh, I don't know. I don't really know how to answer that, to be honest. I've never really considered that thought process. I mean, for me, I, I've just always kind of never really thought about it. I just did it. You know, I never really thought about how it was looked at or how it was perceived or what I thought of it. I just wanted to always do it. This is what I always wanted to do. I always wanted to play in a band. I always wanted to play live and create music that people are going to like and or hopefully like and then do it again and travel and tour and meet people across the, the world and kind of just uh, take their minds off their lives for a half hour or 45 minutes, whatever, I, how long I was on stage for. I never really thought about that deep into it, really. I mean, this is just all I've ever wanted to do. So I don't, uh, I don't know, man. That, that's how about you? I don't know really how to answer that, to be honest. I never really thought much about it. Well, to some degree, it's an identifier, right? You identify with being an artist, a creator, and an artist. You know, nowadays, I think is a um, is a loose term. Creators, even a loose term. I mean, I see a lot of people's profiles now. They just say digital creator. And really, what right. does that mean? Really, if you have a social media page, we're all digital creators because it's <laughs> all being true. digital, right? Yeah, true, yeah. So I think it's a hot word or buzzword to make you feel or seem like you are in the know, in the now. But I do consider myself a creator. Like, I love the creation process. And I've been an artist most of my life, if not all of my life, whether it was drawing or building or writing music, or creating, recording, whatever. Even the performance aspect is an art form, in my opinion, because right. it's just like anything else. There's a skill set. It's a specialized skill set that not everybody possesses. Can it be achieved? Yeah, sure. But there's different levels of it. Right. When I was a kid, I mean, I used to watch Solid Gold. Remember that show, Solid Gold? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And I used to watch the dancers, and I always had a fantasy of being able to dance. I'm very much unable to dance but I was always fascinated with how they moved I would watch the dancers and I would say that person you could tell by the way a person moved or the little bit extra that they gave that it ran inside them it wasn't just a surface thing not to take away from the other dancers but you can sometimes see that the dancer that just gives just a little bit more or the one that has some natural tendencies and took those natural tendencies and honed them with trained programs that really honed yeah, their yeah, skills. Yeah, yeah. And that always fascinated me. So I tried to emulate that in the things that I did. Like, I wouldn't like to do things half-ass, though sometimes they do seem half-ass, right? Because of budget restraints or time restraints or, you know, you work within the confines that you have. And growing up, I was never able to take lessons formally for playing guitar. Maybe I regret that now, but it is what it is. I mean, we just couldn't afford it. It just wasn't something that we did. I was lucky enough to be able to get a guitar 
and then I just kind of learned as I went along. But I tried to apply that whatever it is that I did, whatever level of skill I achieved, I made the most of it. And I joke around all the time, I don't consider myself a musician, I'm a songwriter that just so happens to play guitar, even though I started out, well actually I started out with drums and then I moved to guitar, because it became a better vehicle to write music. Writing music with drums, sometimes the melody gets lost. <laughs> Whatever it is that I learned, I tried to do it as well as I could. And if that meant playing it a certain way, or learning some other skill to enhance my lack of something else, that's what I did. So I always tried to work towards the strengths of that creation process based on the skill sets that I had at that moment. Now, thankfully, over time, you do build more and more of it. For me, being an artist is actually a key ingredient of who I am as a person. Outside of being the performer, being the guy that plays in the band and all that kind of stuff. Because I've realized as I'm now older that my mind works that way. I look for the positive in the situation to make it work for everybody. And that's a creative process. And I do that with the music. I do that with the songwriting. I do that when we're out on tour and, you know, we've hit a roadblock or whatever. That's not to say that I don't stress or get uptight or all that stuff. No, that's not what it's saying. But once I get past a certain point, my mind starts to work in a way that I'm hoping that it's benefiting everybody that I'm involved with. Right. And I think some of that is just because of how I was brought up, that community aspect, part of the culture and all. But being an artist, it's an extension to who I am and what I do. And I think that not every artist that I've met has that listen i've met guys that got into it because they thought they were going to make a lot of money yeah. because they see it you've met guys like that they're yeah, usually yeah, sure. short-lived two three years tops because all of a sudden they hit the obstacles that we all hit all the time and they're like i don't want to, this is not what i want to do they like the music but the music's not in them i remember when i was young i was, I was about 11 maybe 12 and someone was explaining to me I had just started dabbling on guitar. Someone was explaining to me about the difference between being into the music and having the music in you. Yes. Right? You and I, I have talked about this before. Yes. And at I first, agree. they did some visual drawings, and I didn't understand it at first. My feeble, immature mind, right? Because I go, well, they're still into the music here. I wasn't getting it. It wasn't until a few years later when I really started to hit the stride being in the band and it was happening and I didn't realize it, right? Sometimes it happens and you don't realize what's going on around you because you're so into, that's the beauty about being young. You're so into the moment, into the now. Yeah. Because you don't yeah. have any worries. You're not thinking about yeah. tomorrow. The past yeah. is the past. It's that moment, right? As we get older, we sometimes lose that. And we've talked about that on the show and I've struggled with it for years because I'm always thinking ahead. And I lose sight of what's sometimes happening right now because in my mind, I've already passed that, but it's happening now and I'm missing out on certain things. I have gotten better at that. Anyway, it hit me. The people that were coming to the shows, they were into the music. Yeah. When the music was over, they were done. Yeah. But we had the music. It was kind of in us. When it was done, when we were done, whatever we were doing at that moment, we were already taking that experience and applying it to what we had to do next. Oh, we this yep. is that. And yep. it's in the writing and you can feel it and you sense it. And, and sometimes, you know, not to sound like supernatural or anything, but almost there's a preemptive to it. Like, you know what's coming next. You see where a song's going or you mm -hmm. understand it in a short period of time, like quicker than everybody else is. Yeah. Like sometimes yeah. even as a songwriter, you can pick up on where the songwriter's going before the song's even finished. Like, oh my God, the way yeah. he, he just phrased that. That's so yeah. powerful or the imagery that he created from those words or sometimes we use other adjectives or we're describing one thing, but we're actually saying something else. And it's like those hidden meanings. And to me, that's exciting. And I think that's what being an artist is. It's finding new ways to say the same old. Because yeah. we all experience a lot of the same things, just as human beings. I'm very privileged to have the opportunity to be an artist. And like you said, being a working artist on some level. Because it's something that not everybody does. And to be part of that group, that community of 
of other creators. I'm very honored to have that, uh, to say that this is what I do. And I understand that not everybody gets it. While I was away on tour, someone had asked my wife, well, is it really worth it? What he's doing? Like, you know, I don't get it. That's been proposed to me before. Like, why go someplace else to play? Yeah. Yeah. And my yeah. answer to them is usually, well, why not? Like, give me right. three reasons why I shouldn't go. And I'll give you five why I should go. Right. And right. is it worth it? Well, I mean, you could say that about anything. Is anything worth I mean, you could repeat that back to them. Well, whatever you do, is it worth it? Right. And if you're only looking at it one dimensionally, like say financially, then you're missing what it does to us as individuals, as human beings, as spiritual beings, as people here on this earth. And are we supposed to just live a mundane life? I don't think that that's how it was designed. Like if we have gifts or we have talents or we have skills, things that we worked for, then why shouldn't we experience these type things? I know because I've experienced it personally that sometimes what I decide to do or what I'm doing, there's a level of guilt, especially because I have a wife and I have children and I have these other things. And sometimes you feel like, well, what gives me the right to do that? Because yeah. I'm taking something away from someone else, whether it's my time, my presence, time away from work, which then there is a financial aspect to it. You know, whatever. You're leaving home and you somebody has to do the lawn or shovel. I remember I left on tour and I left a day early to get ahead of a snowstorm that was coming because I figured, well, if we get ahead of it, it won't affect us. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it came earlier <laughs> than we expected, but I was still <laughs> not home. I was on the road for 22 hours in the snowstorm. Snowstorm hit home, and my wife and little girl at the time, they were forced to dig out. I know my wife was not happy <laughs> about it, and I knew it. She never said it, but I could tell, <laughs> especially when I started getting photographs of the driveway, and we literally had Canadian <laughs> snow walls. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> On either yep. side of the driveway, yep, she was yep. not happy. The guilt that I was feeling, and to boot, it hit so hard on the East Coast, and we were multiple states down, that the first two shows, we were snowed into the hotel. All right. So we couldn't even get to the venue. So it just adds to it. Right. But trying to explain to somebody, is it worth it? I don't know. You tell me. I'm sure you've been asked that question. What kind of you response know, have you given or have you considered to give? Well, let me answer your question first. So I think that people, kind of the same thing you go, I go, well, I'll put it to you this way. Like when you have someone come up to you and go, oh my God, that set was amazing. Or I love that song or thank you. Thank you for being here. That's worth it alone. You know, there have been times where I've been overseas and, you know, I thank someone for coming to the show and they go, no, thank you for coming here. Well, there's nothing better than that. Like there, there's just not, there's nothing better. There's nothing better than being in a hug and this young Japanese woman like crying in my arms, like because she was so happy to see the band and see us. And yeah, that's worth it. Like whatever it took to get here, that moment, even if it's a fleeting moment, one minute, it is worth everything. We don't even have to. We could talk about going to the States. We don't even have to fly overseas. I mean, for me, if someone just posted on social media, oh, my God, last night's show was killer then yeah, then it, it's totally worth it for me. It just it just takes one thing, one compliment, one comment for me to go, yeah, yeah, it, it's it's always been worth it. I mean, is it hard? Yeah, it's hard. But uh, when you have those moments, those little payoffs, yeah, it is worth it. it. It is worth it. And perfect, perfect example. So I just did a show pretty recently. We pretty much played in front of, I don't know, not many people at all, if you even want to call <laughs> <laughs> there, there just there wasn't that many people at all, and we had traveled a long distance to do it. And when we got done, my drummer says to me, "Man, that was the most fun I've had on stage ever." And he's been playing a long time, and that spoke a lot to me because at that moment I'm like, you know, he's right. Like the four of us had an amazing time on stage. And it didn't matter that there was nobody there. And that was well worth it for my drummer to look at me and go, man, that was the most fun I've ever had playing live on stage. And that says something, man, because it was just like literally 
you know, it was also the sound guy and maybe a few sprinkles of people. Like there wasn't a lot. So it's comments like that that I go, yeah, like this is worth it. Like all this hard work is worth it. I'll, I'll say this too. So because the way you were talking about seeing this experience. So recently I was talking to another fellow musician in a band who they're pretty active. We were just talking about shows and I was telling him how hard it is right now in 2023 to get shows. And when you get shows, it's hard to keep shows because as you know, promoters and, you know, they cancel shows and it's just getting hard and hard, hard. And he says to me, he looks at me and goes, yeah, well, you know, who cares? And I'm like, who cares? Like, how do you not care? And that dawned on me at that moment in time that I went, huh, I am putting this work in because I love to do it. And there are people out there that just do it because they can. And it doesn't matter. Not saying there's no passion in it, but if it stopped tomorrow, they wouldn't be that upset. It would just free up a day of rehearsal and it would free up another day of a weekend because they're not playing. I said to myself, like I walked away and I said to myself, I can't believe that you spend all this time and energy and money putting all this work and talent into it. And you know, it's okay for you, which listen, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there are many guys who play you know, especially a lot of your cover band slash tribute bands are a lot of guys playing out just because they love to play. And I am totally okay with that. And that's awesome. If that's what you do, still, I don't have any less respect for you if that is your attitude. And that's cool with me. But to me, I'm like, um, like I, can't, I don't see that. Like, I can't in my own head think to myself, yeah, like, it's cool. Like, I just want to be in a band and just play live once in a while. And because this is such a part of me, because music is such a huge part of my life, like, even in my everyday life, like, even if I'm just going out to mow the grass, I'll have music on. Like, I'll just have it in my headphones. Like, I'm constantly, constantly consuming music and podcasts, but music. That kind of, I don't want to say attitude, attitude is not That kind of way of thought, I don't understand because I love doing this so much that it does matter to me. If this ended tomorrow, I would be devastated because this is all that's ever mattered to me. Like that showed me, and I guess I've always known it, but when a guy looks at you in the face and goes, yeah, well, you know, it, it's all good. I go, I, no, man. Like I, I was like, I, no, like I, I'm, I'm struggling here. Like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm literally blood, sweat and tears trying to get shows and there are bands out there, original bands, they're just like, yeah, like, you know, if it comes, it comes, if it doesn't, it doesn't. And I'm like, I, I that doesn't compute with me. It just doesn't because I love being an artist and I love doing what we do. And to me, it, it is all worth it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if there's two people. It doesn't matter if there's 2,000 people. It's always been worth it to me. Any time that I've stepped on stage or in a, in a jam spot, it's always been worth it because we create. Who doesn't love to create things from scratch? I mean, writing music and writing song, and you know, because you're, you know, you're a guitar player, so you literally write music. I've been lucky enough to be surrounded by people who create music, and then I just fill in the spots. But I have been known to change things, you know, music-wise, because I just hear something that maybe they're not hearing or time signatures or whatever. Like, who doesn't want to do that? Who doesn't like to create something from scratch and that it's your own? You know, it's, it's like, like, there are kids, right? Like music, you know, songs are our kids. And in terms of creating, I don't understand that. So for me, anything's worth it. Any time is worth it. Creating is worth it. Playing live is worth it. No matter what the show may be, no matter how it ends up, whether good or bad. You know, this recent experience with, like I was just saying about my drummer and what he said about the show, like really proved to me that, yeah, this is worth it because... It is what it is. There's nothing we could do about it. And yet we still had a damn good time, you know, and that, and that says a lot about what we do. And uh, yeah, so for me, it's, it's always worth it. Do I get frustrated? Yes. Do I sometimes throw my arms up in the air and go, I don't know how much longer I can do this because I'm so frustrated? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it's always been worth it. It's always, always been worth it because this is all I've ever wanted to do. And going back to our first episode... It may not be the success that I had intended when I was younger, but it's it's pretty awesome the success that I have had and I continue to have and still doing it. And that, that's okay. So it, it is all worth it. You are listening to The Cosmic Voice with your hosts, Chris Natalini and Mick Michaels. Leaving out the business model that we talk about a lot in the show, Take that out of the equation, like what you're saying. You played 
your hearts out, had a fantastic time, and that had nothing to do with the audience. It had nothing to do with selling merch. It had nothing to do with selling the music. So take that out. Now, I realize that the business model is part of the equation. Listen, hands down, if, if you're doing this more than once a month and you're involved in a lot of different aspects, distribution, marketing, you're doing your own press, promotions down the line, well, then there's a business aspect to it. There's no two ways about it, right? If you're selling tickets yeah. for a show or, you know, whatever. Yep. yep. But take all that out of it for a second. It's the pure moment of playing whether you're a solo actor with a band. And that creation takes life. And in our case, it takes life by the performance. Now, I was just talking to my drummer yesterday. We were driving to a location, and I said, you know, I said, the reality of it is what we do, what we're supposed to do, what our core is, is I go, we're about performance. Like, yeah. we write songs, and we play those songs live. Yeah. I go, not recording, not anything else that we're doing. That's something extra. Yep. Because before they had recording, what did these musicians do? They wrote right. songs and they went around and they played them for people. And that's really what our job is. So you have to embrace that and you have to love. There has to be some aspect of it. It's a release. Yeah. It's a creative release that you share with other people now that has nothing really to do with the audience the audience enhances that experience yeah that yeah. process but yeah. if you're working with other people because we've done it too listen we've played shows where you could see to the back end of the venue through the window across the street and five blocks down where a cop <laughs> is arresting somebody that's how <laughs> quiet it was but we've had some of the greatest shows because we're just playing it's pure play yeah and that's in itself that's worth it yeah yep. because that's the tangibility of everything that we do definitely and then when we connect to an audience that's just like icing on the cake oh yeah yeah for sure for sure you know what i mean because really like you didn't get into a band to sell merchandise no <laughs> no you actually no. didn't get into a band to record because no i wasn't even thinking recording per se when i got into playing heavily it was about performing on stage yes. yep so yep. you see how all this other stuff is sometimes a byproduct people get lost in the the outfits and that's where i think unfortunately mtv created this vision that wasn't reality now tv isn't reality to begin with but right it right. set in motion this belief and i'll tell you recently being on tour out of country i talked to a lot of bands met a lot of people all great people, I think all with the best intentions, hardworking people, but their goals for playing were way different than, say, mine. And that's okay, because you're going to experience that. But yeah. I seen, in my opinion, maybe some of the possible heartaches that they're going to experience with those type of perspectives or thought processes. Listen, that's not to say that it can't happen because it can happen for anyone at any time. Not diminishing that. You stick to the right. dream. If that's your passion, you do it. Nobody tells you one way or the other. But right. there has that's to right. be some realistic viewpoint too. And sometimes that realistic viewpoint happens and you know because you experienced it. Mm -hmm. And we learned that it wasn't really like that. Right. right. Where other people assume because of what they're seeing that this is what it is. And unfortunately, that may be their mindset. However, what they're putting together may not be all in a row as of yet, or it may never be all in a row as yet. Right. Again, this business is hit or miss. You have a better shot of getting hit by a bus twice <laughs> in the same day, possibly the same bus, <laughs> two different sides of the city, than you do making Thank it you. in this business. This business can be deceiving. Because one yeah. day you'll be here and you're taking that with you and you go someplace else and it's completely different. I think that even among artists, especially those who have not experienced it, and they could have been in the business for a lot of years, but the business could be a small hallway that they keep yeah. repeating. So they never yeah. break out of it, but they want to because they think it's someplace else, but they actually may have it better than they, they realize right. once right. they, you know, 
I have learned, I've known this over the course of, of a number of years, that there is a different perception from American bands and overseas bands. And simply, like, if you're an American band, you're overseas, everybody thinks that every single American band is doing phenomenal. Yeah. It's like the land of milk and honey. Yeah. And it's not. In the UK, there's more venues to play in a small area than in a large area here in the U.S., in our regional. Right. That was even before COVID, and now it's even worse. So, <laughs> you know, when you try to explain that, they think that you're either not telling them the truth or, you know, you're just doing something wrong. But it's sometimes hard until someone experiences what it yeah. is. It does make discussion sometimes a little bit more difficult. And I actually ran into some people that still go, like, I want to be a rock star. I want to be a rock star. I'm not even sure what that means anymore. I'm not even sure if it really yeah. ever had uh, yeah, I don't. a definition, like a, a yeah. like a pinpointed definition. But sooner or later, everybody relates it back to what they thought they seen or experienced during MTV's height. Right. And I know for younger people, you're not really sure what that is. Like, what does that yeah. mean? I don't, that doesn't even make sense. But what MTV did for the music industry throughout the 80s and early 90s was unprecedented. Yep. Album sales okay. were yep. crazy. Yep. The exposure yep. for bands was unheard of. Even an unknown band, if they just got some rotation on MTV, and you're seeing that today, you're getting bands that had one hit, and it wasn't even that big of a hit, but they're still able to get themselves on cruises, get themselves part of festivals, do small tours, and the rest of their music is like, well, I, I don't, does anybody know it? Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Unless you were yeah. a particular yeah. fan. but And that yeah. really happened. There was a lot of that from 89 to 92 before the industry changed. I think that being an artist is, it is a personal thing, of course. But like I said earlier, like I'm honored to be part of such a community. And we talked about this in another episode. I do know that there's going to be a time when I'm not doing it the way I'm doing it now. Maybe I'll still be active in some other aspect or something. But when I do come to that end, when it's my decision, not like, you know, death hasn't taken me. I know that I'm going to do it, make that transition and not have regrets. Yeah. And I'm going back yeah. to a life that I didn't forsake just for... Right. Being an artist. Right. There was a time when, yeah, maybe I was forsaking some things and I was taking things for granted. But yeah, listen, we're young. We all go through that. We learn the hard way by hitting our head multiple times. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? Yep. I don't know about yep. you, but I'm still hitting my head multiple times. <laughs> maybe I haven't learned too much. But, you know, the problem is, is you hit your head enough, you're learning nothing. <laughs> nothing. It's nothing. Nothing. When you guys are confronted with somebody saying, is it worth it? And what's the point? Why would you do that? Again, like I usually say, why wouldn't you do it? Give me reasons. Right. Just because you wouldn't do it. And you can't even give me reasons except for the fact that, like, hey, where are you playing? Oh, I'm playing in uh, Massachusetts. Well, that's a long drive. That's the reason. That's a long drive. <laughs> right. Well, right. So is digging six feet under. That's a long drive, too. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, sooner or later, everybody's got to take the drive. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know. If, if that's your reason for not doing it, well, that's not a reason enough. Right. We've talked about this before. At this stage of the game, you know, I do pick and choose things because of my yeah. age, because yeah, of do, our... Yes. Yeah, and, and I think that I built up that right to do so. Why not? It's my life and my dream. I'm going to do the dream. And we talked about that. That was another two topics this season. If you want your dream, you stick to it. Do your dream your way. That's it. And if you're content with it, that's all that happens. As long as you're not treating people terribly. You don't want to yeah. be stepping on yeah. people. And You know, I mean, if you want people to respect your dream, then you have to respect where they're come from. And you have to respect the people that ask you those questions. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had parents over the years of members go, you really like doing this? You know, or <laughs> why are you doing this? Or what's the point? Or maybe it's time to get a real job. And, you know, that's the thing. Here's the funny thing. You know, if you don't make it, it's like, well, you know, you should have gotten a real job. I told you, you can't. But as soon as you make it, oh, man, I knew you could do it. You know, you, you had it in you. Because it's, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about? It's yeah, that kind oh, of yeah. thing. Yeah. So, 
yep. your support yep. changes depending on, and we talked about this, this was season one, how people perceive success. What yeah. they consider, yep. you know, I have certain family members, extended family members, that because I'm not the Rolling Stones or Bon Jovi or Bruce Springsteen or anybody like that, then what's the point of me doing this? Like right. Just because right. you can't see it in your right. little world, right. you're not even in this world anyway. Like, you don't even listen to metal, so how would you even know? You're barely on the internet, so how would you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? That kind of thing. <laughs> And not that I go around and I talk about it because I've actually, I've learned over the years that what I do, I keep to myself. If they ask, I'll say in passing and that's the end of it. I don't get into long conversations yeah. with somebody yeah, yeah, because yeah. Yeah. certain people get uptight, something for they worry or like you've talked about, there's always that jealousy with some. Oh yeah. So I avoid all that. You know, sometimes I play it down. Oh, where's your next show? Oh, we're going to the UK. And then it's just in passing and I grab a, a cannoli and I walk out there <laughs> and then, you know, I just drop the mic, that kind of yeah. thing. I just move on, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm not, you know, so you stick to your guns, you believe in yourself. You get a hard skin in this business. You let it roll off your back. Yeah, when man, you can, definitely. Man. You know what definitely, I'm talking yep. You know. Yeah, I do. You're that I kind do. of guy. You're strong. I try to be. You try to be. I tell you, it's <laughs> tough at times. No, no, no. It is, man. It, you know, it is. And it, unfortunately, I think some of the problem, too, is people just don't understand passions because unfortunately, people don't have a lot of pa a majority of people don't have a lot of passions. You know, they go through the way that society has us. You grow up, you pay taxes, you get married, you have kids, you die. And then, you know, you work and you die. I think people miss passions or maybe they're afraid to take on a passion. And I think that's kind of where we lose a lot of people. I think that's why a lot of people don't understand it because they just don't have that passion for anything and they don't get it. They just don't understand. I think you're right. I think passion scare people yeah. because it makes them think and feel for a lack of a better term out of the box. They go against yeah. the grain and they don't know how to handle that. No one wants to stand on the field alone. Yeah. And it can be frightening. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Yeah. If you want people to respect what you're doing, you got to respect where they're coming from. And yeah, hey, listen, I get what you're saying. Let's just see what happens, you know, or don't worry about it. I got it covered. You know, I once had a family member say to me, and this was during a hiatus of not being in the business. They said, I'm glad you're not doing that anymore. I'm glad you decided to grow up. That's what they said. I'm glad you decided to grow up. And man, let me tell you something. I bit my tongue. I was like, you got to be kidding. Like who? So I just stood up and I walked out. It was just so like, what was the yeah. point of whatever? But it was like a knife. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah and I, sure. I was much younger then. But, you know, now I could be a little quicker and not have to drop an F-bomb <laughs> with a, the reply. But back then I had to get away because the F-bomb was like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Right. <laughs> It was like midway. <laughs> it is what it is, man. Stick to your guns. Keep swinging. Because the worst thing to do is to give up on your dream, right? Because the That's only right. thing yeah, that man. you can guarantee by quitting is nothing will ever happen. That's right. 100%. You got anything else you want to add? No, man. You can't follow up with that quote. That is a quote we should be using. That you can't end. You, that is a great way to end a season. It is. And listen, with that, I want to thank everyone for all the support for listening to the show, for sharing the show, for just reaching out to us with questions or whatever. We really do appreciate all your support. Like we've said before, we never thought that we were going to do this long term. This was more of a COVID fill in, maybe get a season or two, move on back to our life. This has become such a key component to what Chris and I do in midst of our playing and, and everything else that we are so grateful that everyone is listening and sharing it. It's just great. It really does. You know, without me getting all choked up and stuff and using Chris's beard as a tissue, I just want to thank everyone. We really do appreciate it. Yes, we definitely do. It's been, uh, it's really been something that started as an idea and it has really turned into something that, that is a huge part of my life that I enjoy doing. And, uh, you know, every time I am involved in music some way, like it's always in the back of my head. All right. Like, pay attention because you may need something for a show <laughs> so no i am very excited and i also want to extend my deepest thank yous for all the shares all the listens all the likes me, me and mick appreciate it man it's been a great ride and uh and we're glad that we're able to use our experiences to maybe help somebody else and that's why we intended to do this so thank you very much for the past five seasons and uh look forward to the next one <laughs>
Absolutely. Chris, and thank you, my good man. I Absolutely. love sharing well, this journey you. with you. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, man. Me too, brother. You too. I love doing this. I love seeing your face once or twice a week. It's awesome. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Great stuff. So listen, not to date the show, but have a fantastic summer, everyone. We will see you again for Season 6 of The Cosmic Voice. If you like this episode, check out some of our other episodes at www.thecosmicvoice.com. Step into the cosmic verse and fulfill your dream. Thanks so much for listening. This is The Cosmic Voice. Be sure to check us out at thecosmicvoice.com. Like and follow us on Facebook at The Cosmic Voice. You can find The Cosmic Voice everywhere you listen to online podcasts like Deezer, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Stitcher, and so many more. Okay, folks, that will do it for another episode of The Cosmic Voice. Mick and I would like to say thank you very much for tuning in, and we will see you next week. You're listening to The Cosmic Voice. Music, talk, and nothing but business.